Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear participants. In the previous module, we had discussed the intersections of feminist and cyborgian subjectivities. We conceptualized Haraway's cyborg figuration as a cartographic tool to quantify our historical situatedness as a human and also as a gendered being. In the current module, we will discuss new modes of post-human feminist subjectivities. We shall foreground Bredotti's thoughts on refiguring human subject as a post-anthropocentric assemblage at a crossroad with feminist philosophy. We shall discuss Bredotti's essay, Refiguring the Subject, from her 1994 book, Nomadic Subjects, Embodiment and Sexual Difference in Contemporary Feminist Theory. This essay collection contains 15 essays, two newly written and other revised essays previously published elsewhere. This essay collection, as one of the reviewers Sabine Grins has remarked, offers an overview of Rosie Bretotti's work on nomadic subjectivity that she has pursued for many years. Refiguring the subject focuses on redefining the human subject, especially the woman, to produce a more conducive revisioning of subjectivity and embodiment in the crisis of modernity and scientific rationality. The essay is a reworking of the need to redefine embodiment and sexual difference in feminist theory as a reminder to end the centrality of man as the measure of all things. The 21st century marks a change in the socio-economic and discursive conditions in the status of all minorities, especially women as gendered beings. However, we are still hesitant to incorporate women socially, economically and culturally. Bridotti rhetorically poses following questions in this context. Firstly, what is the exact price to be paid for the integration of women? Secondly, what values shall feminists propose to the old system? And third, what representations of themselves will they oppose to those already established? Can we move beyond gender? Historically, the term subjectivity was restricted to the dominant discourses produced in accordance to the Eurocentric ideals. The others were deemed as subjects but devoid of subjectivities. In the next slide, we have a video. In it, Rosie Bredotti explicates the process of subject formation as we always associate the idea of being human to biology and not to humanities. We can talk about man in all of his configurations. Um, and when we do, we define man usually as the man of reason. I'm a philosopher. Um, and we define man in relation to what he is not. He is not an animal. If he's an animal, he's a thinking animal. Uh, he's not a woman. And if he's a woman, he's sort of within not so porous boundaries. And uh, he is intrinsically Western and European, uh, uh, intrinsically. Um, and culture and civilizational discourses permeate our understanding of men. As humanity scholars, we've been more than happy to delegate the human to biologists and to that strange tribe of fascinating scholars that are the anthropologists. Um, anthropology is the winner in here. The, the anthropology takes it all. Um, it's extraordinary. There will be a whole discussion here, and I'll, I'll delegate that also to the questions. So we, Dante, not Darwin, is, is how we approach um, the question of, of men. And, and, uh, this, and part of the problem of the era that we're going through is that we cannot 
avoid the issue of the Britotti questions the anthropocentric scholarship. She illustrates the fact that several minorities have challenged the lack of representation in the political, socio-cultural and economic discourses. The conventional meaning of the term subjectivity is constantly challenged by several minorities, especially gendered ones who claim representation in the political and discursive sense. A Eurocentric postmodern juncture minutely observes the subject of the Enlightenment, anthropocentrism, and humanist philosophy. In a postmodern critical framework, the ideas of liberation and equality are constantly under interrogation. The routinely prevalent sense of equality often excludes the LGBTQIA individuals. The phrase equality of sexes is a convenient replacement for equality of genders on many fronts. The advent of new techno-scientific discourses have posed new challenges to the binary system of defining the self. As we have discussed earlier, Haraway in this context has suggested the use of pronouns to consolidate one's identity and representation. We have also discussed the evolved cybernetic self of Eva in the previous module. Bredotti here proposes a transition from the self to the subjectivity in this regard, especially the feminist subjectivity. The feminist epistemological debates focusing on issues of gender, sexual difference and the critique of notions such as liberation and equality are both necessary and central to critical theory. Bredotti comments that if the crisis of modernity consists in the decline of the rationalist paradigm, then feminist theory and practice are historically and conceptually coextensive with or built into the modernist project. The idea and association with subjectivity or his or her rational self are challenged by the new scientific discourses related to changing historical conditions. In foregrounding the idea of subjectivity in our post-human world, we repeatedly stumble upon the term crisis. For Bredotti, the word crisis, as opposed to its genealogy, refers to a sense of renewal, a newness. Crisis, according to her, allows a critical gap for feminist thinkers in the post-human world to root themselves in better positions and analyze what is lacking. It also allows a reinvention. It should be noted that for Bredotti, there is little or no scope for nihilism or cynical acceptance of crisis as loss and fragmentation in the feminist discourse. It refers to reorientation. On the contrary, she comments, for feminist discourses, the term crisis opens up new possibilities and potentialities. It allows women to rethink the link amongst identity, power in the community, as the very idea of what it means to be human is under investigation. Feminist analysis of the crisis, therefore, should reinstate positive theoretical articulation. Bredotti's nomadic subject is a product of this affirmative understanding of the word crisis. She defines the nomadic subject as a knowing subject that is neither human universalist that is universal man nor the anthropos that is the centrality of all beings. It is a non-unitary subject that is relational, affective and transferal. The nomadic subject is intersected by race, sexuality, patriarchal capitalism, class, globalization, gender and now the virus in the form of pandemic. Therefore, the concept of all men and all knowledge is redundant and outdated. For Bredotti, feminism as a critical philosophy is situated on the assumption that the universal subject of knowledge is a falsely generalized standpoint. The discourses of all knowledge tacitly imply that the subject is male 
and also white middle class heterosexual. In Bredotti's hypothesis, if in a nomadic movement, the subject is replaced with one that is structured by other variables such as gender or sexual difference and also ethnicity or race, what used to be seen as a universal appears as a most particular approach and we will have new forms of subjectivities. For Bredotti, the post-human convergence is a coping mechanism. It provides ways of knowing one subjectivity in considering the multiple variables, especially gendering and racialization. Black Lives Matter and Me Too are some of the more recent examples. This explains the politics and power of exclusion over categories of individuals who are deemed others. In other words, gender as a construct allows us to reflect on the interdependence of sexual identity and other variables of operation such as race, age, culture, class and lifestyle, etc. Therefore, our study of gender and feminist studies allows the readers to think about the critique of assumption and projection. Theories of gender are formulated on a vision of the subject as a process and on the multiplicity of variables, race, class, age, sexual preference, pedagogy and lifestyles construct intersectional identities. To further this assertion, let us watch a video. In it, Rosie Bredotti elaborates on the use of non-human cyborg imagery used by feminist queer and trans discourses to challenge oppression and thus situating new subjectivities. In this epistemic acceleration, some are faster than others. And the um, feminist theorist and, and, and the queer and posthuman uh, have moved very, very fast in grabbing possibility of this empathic bonds between women, non-human, including monstrous and alien others. Um, there is a long tradition, Afrofuturism is part of this tradition, um, of really grabbing the possibility of going beyond the human in order to escape oppression. Um, and in, sci in feminist science fiction or in uh, black science fiction, Octavia Butler would be an example, you get this alliance between women, animals, Africans, extraterrestrials, anything to escape the empire of white men. Um, and I think there's a lot of this going on uh, at the moment in the popular culture, uh, in, in queer and transhuman studies, very interesting genealogies where you get a disidentification from dominant forms of the human. As we defamiliarize and decolonize the dominant model of subject formation, we enter the post-human condition. For Bredotti, the feminist subjectivity can be best understood from two materialist standpoints, the institutional and the theoretical. The institutional, that is, for example, gender as a participant, a determinant in policy making. And theoretical, for example, feminist post-humanism as a field of study. Bredotti, however, feels that a lot of Anthropocene scholarships showcase distinct bias towards the anxieties of dominant cultures, ethnic groups and classes. Bredotti argues that a new trend seems to be emerging that emphasizes the situated, specific, embodied nature of the feminist subject while rejecting biological or psychic essentialism. This is a new kind of female embodied materialism. She cites the example of how Teresa de Loretis reworks the Foucauldian notion of technology of the self to address the material foundations of this vision of the subject and more importantly on how gender functions as a variable that structures subjectivity. Subjectivity thereafter becomes a process of material or institutional and discursive or symbolic practices. For Bredotti, as we serve and repurpose ourselves in multiple ecologies, such as the social, cultural, and many more, 
the historical specificities of women construct new figurations in the society. For example, Eva in Ex Machina as a cyborg. For Bridotti, the very notions of gender, feminism and sexual difference are bound to criticize the basis of the new vision of subjectivity as a process. Significantly, the feminist thought and practice focus on deconstruction and de-essentialization of categories that imply restrictions. More specifically, Bredotti wants to reassemble a vision of female subjectivity after the certainties of gender dualism have emerged. She poses certain questions in this regard. First, how do we reconcile the radical historical specificity of women with the insistence on constructing the new figuration of humanity? Second, can we speak of and act on differences as positivity, not as deviations, not as subordinated forms of being? And thirdly, how can we build a new kind of collectivity in differences? Bridotti here presents a set of rhetorical questions to explicate the multifaceted nature of post-human feminist philosophy. The notion of new kind of collectivity refers to the empathetic bond between and across the plurality of genders on the dynamic spectrum. While acknowledging multiple subjectivities, becomings and individuals. Further, in order to understand the concept of subjectivity as a post-anthropocentric tool, Bridotti alludes to the concept of the rhizome presented by Deleuze and Guattari. As a philosophical concept, rhizome describes systems with no clear beginning or end. For example, the internet. The term was developed by Giles Deleuze and Felix Guattari in their project Capitalism and Schizophrenia, which had continued between 1972 and 1980. Deleuze calls the rhizome an image of thought based on the botanical rhizome that apprehends multiplicities. Post-human feminist seek subversion by dislocating themselves from the idea of unity. As we have seen previously, this idea is also presented by Haraway in her Cyborg Manifesto. Bredotti interrogates the intersection between the new feminist thought and contemporary post-structuralist concerns about the structures of subjectivity. To explicate it further, Bridotti uses the example of Deleuze's effort to image the activity of thinking differently, acknowledging multiplicity and plurality of the subject. Deleuze focuses on the necessity to redefine, refigure and reinvent theoretical practice and philosophy with it in a reactive mode which continues to be a concern within the feminist discourses. For Deleuze, we are a sum total of our interconnections and the sum total is not a fixed quantifier. However, it denotes a movement away from the folic order. Deleuze's analysis focuses on the creative aspect of subjectivity. In feminist paradigms, it should ideally move beyond the constraints of fellow-centricism. For Bredotti, the idea of rhizome is Deleuze's leading figuration. It points to a redefinition as a quest for new images of thought and self. A similar understanding can be presented to critique the constructed subjectivity of gendered or racialized or sexualized or marginalized subjects and further narratives of otherness. For post-human feminists, a revision of polarized sexual difference as a binary marker can lead to a better future. Such an understanding allows a much wider and more complex set of possible interconnections that blur established hegemonic distinctions of class, culture, race, sexual practice, gender and others. The image of the rhizome pops up here as a figuration for the kind of political subjectivity as promoted by Deleuze. The rhizomatic figuration deconstructs the fellow-centric discourse 
prevalent in gender and sexuality studies, feminist studies and men's and masculinity studies. These insights are represented as propelling us along the multiple directions of extratextual experiences of multiple becomings devoid of masculine, feminine, racialized, sexualized or heteronormative becomings in culture. Bridotti has referred to Deleuze as he had stressed the need to think differently and has shunned the linear mode of thinking. Bridotti wants to avoid the mimetic repetition of established academic and intellectual conventions based on the phallogocentric codes. She cautions feminist thinkers of the syndrome of the dutiful daughter, stating that the most difficult task is how to put together the will to change with the desire for the new, which as Deleuze teaches us implies the construction of new desiring subjects. Bridotti, however, feels that Deleuze has neglected the different implications for men and women in establishing his concept of becoming a woman. She follows this with an articulation of the problematic differentiation between feminism and feminist theory, which expresses interest in feminist theories without ever becoming politically engaged. Bridotti also critically engages with aspects of the delusion philosophy of becoming. Organs without bodies and images without imagination. As Sabine Grins has remarked in the review article, she discusses their gendered meaning by analyzing visualization technologies in reproduction and pornography. Both are areas in which women have already been organs without bodies. Thus, women and men have very different starting points, not only in becoming women, but also in other forms of nomadic becoming. She suggests that the feminist theory as the philosophy of sexual difference identifies as a historical essence the notion of woman at the exact period in history when this notion is deconstructed and challenged. The crisis of modernity makes available to feminists the essence of femininity as a historical construct that needs to be worked. Woman therefore ceases to be the culturally dominant and prescriptive model for female subjectivity and instead turns into an identifiable topos for analysis. As a construct, as Deloretis has worked, a masquerade, as Butler has suggested, a positive essence, as Irigiri has remarked, or an ideological trap, as Ovitic has remarked, to mention only a few. Bridotti feels that for feminist philosophy, identity is a site of differences encompassing pluralities in terms of sex and gender. Bridotti feels that the myth of women is now a vacant lot where different women can play with their subjectivity. We must think through this multiplicity and restore intersubjectivity to create a bond as there cannot be lasting social change without the construction of new kinds of desiring subjects as molecular, nomadic and multiple. Bridotti also refers to Donna Haraway and her image of the cyborg in a post-gender world in several essays of her collection including the present one. For example, in her essay with the title Mothers, Monsters and Machines, and sexual difference as a nomadic political project, etc., she has referred to Haraway. Both Bridotti and Haraway have developed a feminist stand on gender. They suggest that if we have a place for feminist theory in 21st century, then we have a place for all species and not just the anthropocentric man. Therefore, gender cannot be ideally used to discriminate. Bridotti also feels that the image of the cyborg is important in our consideration of women and by extension of other marginalized genders. Since we have discussed Haraway in this context already, a brief comparison 
between these two philosophers shall be helpful at this point. Bridotti and Haraway agree that thinking about the subject amounts to rethinking of his or her bodily roots. The body is not a biological given but a field of inscription of socio-symbolic codes. It stands for the radical materiality of the subject. Bridotti feels that Haraway has also been able to expose the limitations of Foucault's notions of biopower or power over the body by noting that contemporary power does not work by normalized heterogeneity anymore, but rather by networking, communication and multiple interconnections. Bridotti links Haraway's notion of the cyborg with the requirements of feminist paradigms by focusing on what kind of gender system is being constructed under our very eyes. Bridotti acknowledges that Haraway draws our attention to the construction and manipulation of docile, knowable bodies in our present social system. She invites us to think of what new kind of bodies are being constructed right now, as in the case of female cyborgs, resulting in new gender systems. Bridotti further creates a subjective mode of inquiry by juxtaposing Haraway's cyborg and Gina Coria's mother machine. While Haraway represents an affirmative image of liberation through her cyborg, Coria presents a grim picture of manipulation in her imagination of the mother machine. Bridotti juxtaposes two images of the cyborg to articulate the two representations of political struggle, two different ways to deal with feminist critiques of rationality and created models of otherness and gendered identity. The first is Haraway's cyborg, the second is Jenna Coria's 1985 work on mother machine, the artificial breeder or fertility farm which Coria criticizes in terms of the reproductive brothel. Haraway's cyborg embodies a positive friendly vision of the body machine relationship in our high tech world, while Coria introduces a brand new set of epistemological and ethical questions. The mother machine provides us a dystopic vision of motherhood. It explicates a complicated relationship of body and politics of birth. While foregrounding reproductive technologies from artificial insemination to artificial wombs. Haraway's cyborg presents transcendence while Coria's image of the mother becoming a machine speculates fear and dystopic imaginations. We have also discussed such grim imageries in Atwood's dystopia Handmaid's Tale. A similar approach is taken towards transgender persons and the queer community. This culture propagates an unhealthy critique of birth, sex and gender performativity. Bridotti points out that the mother machine image instead of transcendence embodies a negative and rather hostile view of the body machine relation, stressing its potential for exploitation and manipulation. While Haraway defends a vision of the body as a machine, as an image of the multiple denaturalized subject, Coria expresses in dramatic terms the fear that the body, especially the woman's, might become just a machine. However, both cases display questions about the future of science and technology and respective repercussions on gender differences. The feminist post-human discourse provides feminist subjectivities on a spectrum, especially in science and technology. Haraway suggests that the cyborg fights for all, that it represents all. As a next step, Bridotti focuses on the idea of sustainability while reading Haraway's cyborg. The idea of sustenance has been reiterated by our current positioning in the COVID-19 pandemic. Bridotti adds that in order to dismantle implicit and explicit structural links to hegemonic practices of domination and discrimination, 
in terms of race, class or sex, the principles of rationality ought to be applied. Once we negate the so called God given principle and attempt to deconstruct structural inconsistencies and reliance on binary oppositionalities such as man woman, nature culture, homo heterosocial, etc., a non naturalistic nature of the human is exposed which focuses on the opportunities of new social building, empowerment and sustainability. For Bredotti, it is not the anthropos but the cyborg figuration which is the progenitor of post-human subjectivities. According to Bredotti and I quote, the cyborg as an epistemological model is a perfectly adequate one in so far as it breaks down the dualistic barriers between the body and its technological and technical supports." Unquote. Though the mother machine model by Korea focuses on the reproductive technologies and reviews the scientific and social aspects of human reproductive technologies from the perspective of contemporary holocaust, the relationship between body and the machine is much more complicated. Bridotti suggests that the cyborg model implies a vision of the body that is neither physical nor mechanical nor just textual. For Bridotti, the cyborg figuration can become an icon for feminist pedagogy. The queer, the trans discourses, men's and masculinity studies and gender studies as it incorporates all. It functions as a counter paradigm for the bodily intersection with external reality. It is an adequate reading not only of the body, not only of machines, but rather of what goes on between them. As a new functional replacement of the mind-body split, the cyborg is a post-metaphysical construct. Noteworthy enough, feminism has contributed to the decline of the universal rationalist paradigm historically. Bridotti says, that the specificity of the feminist standpoint is in terms of gender differences and of gender specific analysis. But everything in feminist theory and practice makes it capable of elaborating general theoretical frameworks. For Bridotti and Haraway, the future of feminist post humanism is based on how individuals, especially the marginalized, find their places in all forms of major employable discourses and jobs, marking both practice and performance. Also, by not limiting the idea of the human to biology, we should ideally initiate an investigation into the future of feminism and gender in AI, robotics, biotechnology as intersectional fields with humanities. According to Bredotti, not only the epistemological issue of scientific revolutions, but also fiction, the imagination and science logos should be recombined in a new unity, which is more than just being a man or a woman. Haraway warns us that the future of feminist politics depends on how women negotiate the transition to high tech motherhood and to the idea of surveillance, cyber security. AI tech and digital transformations in almost all fields of employment. For Bridotti, such an approach admonishes the women and now all others to leave behind naturalistic nostalgia and paranoid fears. Bridotti caters to the challenge to speak cogently of the techno scientific world while maintaining a certain level of mythical wonder and admiration about it in pursuit of a new evolved sense of community building. We need to reinvent new forms of literacy to decode today's world in terms of gender, sex, race and other markers of differentiation. Following similar train of analysis, Haraway also recommends that we should start to rethink the world as semiosis, that is a semiotic material agent with which we interact to produce knowledge as opposed to getting locked in a relationship of mastery and domination. As the structures of power and dominance, we need to rethink sexuality without genders 
and genders without sexuality. The expanding spectrum is a testament to the generative power of the post-human feminist and gender discourses. According to Bredotti, the coalition of interests between feminist figurations of a post-human subjectivity and Deleuze's positive reaction to the decline of phallogocentrism with his emphasis on rhizomatic thinking will produce new figurations. Haraway's cyborg is just the beginning. However, both Bredotti and Haraway stress the need to work on transforming the very image of thought and subjectivity as an intensive, multiple and discontinuous process of becoming. Therefore, we need to negotiate with the subject and continue to do so. The politics of location and subjectivity renegotiates with the process of becoming rather than being in Bredotti's epistemological understanding. Similar to Haraway's cyborg, feminist theory needs to find more metaphors to seize the opportunities for new social bonding while generating notions of sustainable empowerment. As we are nearing the completion of this journey of contextualizing gender, we will attempt to deconstruct the idea of nowness, gender and ramifications of being gendered amidst the global COVID-19 pandemic in our next and our last module. Thank you.